Okay, Dan, um, uh, show is yours. Uh, you probably want to project so we can see where you're pointing as well as um, I see you gave us the URL in the chat. Right, okay. Um, so, uh, Modable has this manifest idea. Um, so that's a very brief description of what m modules to build um, and where to get them and what their names are and stuff like that is map everything to main. That's basically the trivial example there. Um, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. What does map everything to main mean? Map in what sense? Well, that's the puzzle that I was presented with, you know, right? So it's not at all clear at this oh, point. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Um, and so I was, first of all, just getting a mental model of what they're doing. Um, I think they don't discuss it much more here. Um, uh, so they have some examples with slightly more, but the package I was building had stuff from NPM modules and from three or four uh, NPM packages and from three or four different Agoric packages. And then whatever. anyway. So I was swimming around in this, trying to build a mental model. And then I finally, the light bulb went off a little bit. Um, and I got to the point where I could use one of the NPM world has a thing for saying, okay, given a module source, find all, find out where all the imports come from. Uh, and so there's a thing called detective for lots of different module formats and in particular detective ES6 was the, the only one I needed because XS only deals with ES6 modules. Um, and so based on by, that. By ES6, I, by, by ES6 modules, you mean the same thing as ESM modules, just the standard ECMAScript modules. Yes, that's correct. Okay. Um, so I think I have the sort of demo in the, um, so there's this tool called tape that we at Avark use for, for testing and a typical use of it just in normal ways is you say tape and then minus R ESM to teach node about ESM modules and go find all the test scripts and it just runs them all. Um, so I wanted to have a similar experience with Modable, um, which doesn't have, you know, automatic lookup of all the module specifiers. So this tool I built called tape access build or whatever, um, you, you have to tell it what is sort of the top directory and then what are all the test files you want. And then it builds a manifest and a main program. And I guess it's useful to actually look at this thing. Uh, and the two places where it works are uh, eventual send is one where it works. So what are the odds that if I type exactly this, That's not as exciting. Um, you have three dots there. Oh, right. Which means fill in the right thing. Um, there we go. So what this has done is it's looked at, so for example, here's one that imports dot dot slash source slash index and it imports that. Um, that seems to be what they import. And then it produces a manifest that says, get main from text S, test XS main, which is hard coded by this tool. Um, and then since uh, these things are running on node and they just expect console to drop out of the sky, provide that. Um, and then I've forgotten what that is, but uh, so here's where it found dot slash source slash index and, and told it how to, how to find that. Um, and Agora Carden, it found that in the, um, well, I've got a work alike for that. And then, oh, the, I guess the, the index imported E and so it found that. Um, 
oh, these are the actual test modules. That's what test slash test E is the test module itself and those three things. So this, um, Oops, minus P is the wrong thing. So that's enough to um, tell it to where to find all this stuff and build the thing and such and like. Um, and it works in a few cases. Um, there's the thing trying to run. <coughs> but um, not in general. Um, and now I don't know if you want me to talk about the, the excess constraints, which are a little bit outside the sure okay so um, one of the constraints is this this build system mc config or whatever is um it builds a, a directory tree of the compiled modules the bytecode compiled modules and uh, then where uh, was i doing deep no i was doing release i guess no maybe not Let's debug. Usually the thing is named by this directory here. Uh, where did it put everything? Uh, okay, so. Boring. Where did everything go? No, that's not where it is. Maybe this is where it is. Yeah, okay. Uh, modules. Okay, so it took all of it took all of those modules and like main turns into main.xsb and oh but um So it used this name and not that name, you might notice. So it's just called main, even though the real file name is something else. Um, okay, so show, show us the manifest again. Forty eyeball effect. Okay, so the the modules um, uh, section is two columns, and from what you just said, it sounded like uh, the second column is the name of the source files, and the first column is the names of the uh, compiled binary uh, files. Is that correct? Um, yeah, there's some there's something not right here. What is the semantics of um, of this module section? What is I'm what is still puzzling it out. Um, okay. Let's see. <laughs> I must have sort of understood it in order to build this tool. Uh, uh, is it a module map? Uh, is the same, let's say the third one from the bottom, the dot slash search slash E, is it saying, is, is that saying that uh, if, if something with the default module map imports from dot slash search slash E, it should get the thing whose source was at home Connolly project, et cetera? Is it well, mapping almost. relative specific? Okay. Uh, so here's the tree that it built. Um, so if, like if index said dot slash E, it would get this. Um, if screen said dot slash source slash E, it would get this. So th at runtime, things are looked up in this world. And they're looked up in this world according to 
the specifier name being mapped to that directory tree? Um, no, just the specifier name that's in the import statement. At runtime, you know, suppose you're in the screen module and it says import dot slash MC, then you get this. Okay. Um, or I think if you just say import MC, you, you also get this. Um, so in any case, the, anything that's relative is relative inside this world here. Okay. Um, and anything that's absolute or bare, I think it goes from the top. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, and I remember there was something about uh, XS only understands one level of dot dot. Yeah, I taught it one at one more. <laughs> okay. Um, um, so so this so the tree we're looking at um, is that. That tree is the directory tree in which the XSB files are found? Yeah. Okay. Uh, and the names come from the, um, uh, the, the directory names in this tree are the, the identifiers uh, that can be used as directory names in the specifier strings. Yeah. Okay. So uh, going so going back to the uh, meaning of the manifest, the module section of the manifest. Um, uh, it, it sounds like the the first column are absolute specifier names, uh, and the second column is where the corresponding actual sources on the file system are found. Yeah. Yeah. That's correct. Okay, I notice that on the right hand side, most of those are absolute file names, but some of them, but you have two forms of relative file names. There's the dot slash, and then there's just the like test slash test hyphen E. So where yeah, are these I, names coming from? So those I believe came from the, the test things I believe came from the command line. And then this is kind of hard hard coded into the tool, and this comes from that dependency tool. Okay, so the dependency tool, uh, the ones that it's calculating, it's always giving you absolute file paths. I think so. Okay. Um, okay, and uh, just double checking, uh, Michael, in your terminology, uh, this would be a mapping from. Uh, absolute specifier to module location. Is that correct? Uh, I'm not so sure about that. Um, the the thing that a long time ago when Dan, you and I were talking, uh, there was some confusion over whether um, the actual specifiers that were used in the imports in the source files whether those were just looked up directly in the map or if they were somehow resolved to a path before they were looked up. They are resolved. Well, if they start with dot or, you know, yeah, they're resolved. Okay, uh, so. Sorry, Michael, can you, can you ask that question again? Yeah, so uh, just as far as if we're in, um, oh, oops, didn't mean to tell. Okay, if we're in uh, source, E, um, packages, credentials, and get. Uh, okay. So this import of dot slash E is relative to index in source, right? Okay. Yeah. Um, but you said, what was the trick about the dot dots? Is it just? Well, they, their C code that does the lookup at runtime would check for dot slash, and it would check for dot dot slash. It didn't have a general algorithm for doing dot dots, and you know, it just had 
two special cases. So I added one more special case. <clears throat> okay. So we'll probably have to fix that. Um, yeah, I figured before doing anything interesting, it would basically, in other places where I've seen this stuff, there really needs to be kind of three columns here instead of two. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so you can override what an individual module chooses to import? Um, it's not so much that about overriding. It's, let's see. There's, oh, what, what, what's been lost is the stuff on the right. So maybe it's just enough to make the stuff on the right available at runtime. Um, let me show you a screw case. Um, so here we are in packages cosmic swing set and um, So this lib ag solo start wants to import a bunch of stuff from swing set bat. Okay. Okay. So I, I sent a, a, a re reply to one of your issues that you raised. Yeah. We should change the sources instead. If we, if we really have to get around this uh, to change the source instead to say from adagoric slash swing set that slash source slash index. And then you can move all those maps of Adagoric controller and all those down below Adagoric swing set path. That's a possible solution. Um, I didn't know how widely people were interested in munging with the source to yeah. make up for this problem. Well, we definitely have to. We definitely have to discuss this because. Yeah. So, so, so the screw so, case is just to dem demonstrate the screw case here is that um, so I told it how to get to the agoric swing set bat you know here which is somewhat straightforward but then if source slash index um, imports controller then this dot slash controller gets looked up in with respect to the thing on the left. Oh, so you get dot slash controller. <laughs> and fortunately, this didn't end up in something totally un irre irreconcilable. I was able to reconcile all of the pointers, but only because I was lucky and things didn't collide. Uh, sorry, quick question. Um, it says dot slash controller. Is that file inside swing swing set? Um, oh, so so it's inside swing set bat, but because but, it's looking up a adagoric swing set bat, it thinks dot oh, is uh, adagoric. Oh yeah, yeah. So so you would have you know because you're treating it as a as a package specifier, um, so you you are virtualizing it in a separate folder, right? Um, Am I am I imagining uh, the parts correctly, or uh, yes, yeah, so that's that's the way it works in the Node.js world in which this was written. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I see. I see the problem that you're running into here. Okay. Ah, oh. I see. So, so I did not know that Node does this. Um, the if I understand what the the problem that we're talking about. Uh, that means that, okay, one of the things I had been assuming, uh, which I think is part of uh, Michael's make importer architecture, Michael, you can tell me if I've got this right, is that um, the mapping from relative specifiers to absolute specifiers uh, is done without consulting the file system, is done purely in terms of, um, you know, some, you know, like a slash, like a slash algebra, or whatever sort of local, uh, you know, local 
um, algebra of um, you know of the relative specifier and absolute specifier textual language uh, the resolver wants to interpret, and it's only in going from the absolute specifier to the module location that you actually consult the file system. Um, but this example where the relative specifier to um, to the search slash index um, doesn't say search um, and then a dot dot with uh, within there. I think I'm confused. Um, so yeah. it's it's the dot within there because if you look at the top uh, frame that that you have open there down, where adagoric slash controller. So the top one is adagoric swing set bat. So that refers to source index as mapped in the manifest. Then the one right below there, adagoric slash controller, from source index, we reference dot slash controller. So it says, oh, dot is adagoric because the current yeah. module is adagoric swings at bat. And then mm -hmm. it makes it adagoric slash controller. So it's it's not doing it's doing the math on the specifiers that we initially told it. It's not doing it on the actual locations. Right. Right. The, on, the yeah. only sorry, sorry, could I could I highlight one thing here? The on, the only thing that is confusing to reason about is the fact that controller has um, two ways to get to it. Uh, the dot slash controller loads it from adagoric slash uh, swing set that slash controller, which is uh, aliasing to slash SRC slash index slash controller. Uh, no, that's not the way this map works, so. Uh, no, but uh, I mean, the way, the way uh, relative specifiers work. Oh, so you mean in the node world, for example? Uh, yeah, so, so, so there's, there's a duality here that is happening. You have scoping, um, and you have um, resolution, um, you know, um, uh, algebra or, you know, re re resolution logic, you know, you, you know, purely, purely theoretical resolution versus resolution by walking on, on the disk, you know, like literal resolution. And my, 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 my problem, I think, sorry, the problem I think in trying to communicate or trying to debug this um, is that there is, um, there is, you know, if, if you're going to work with scopes, then what do you do when you do double dot slash at the root of that scope? Uh, when, you, when you cross outside the threshold of a scope, you can no longer resolve uh, the double dot slash uh, because, you know, it, the ultimate one is, it's a it, double dot slash is equal to dot slash at the root. Um, and if that is not the case somewhere in the logic, it will be hard um, to communicate what's going on exactly. Um, I, I think this is really the problem we're getting here. Well, so that, I, I'm pretty sure um, that the problem is that the, the, the absolute path where the module came from is forgotten at runtime. Precisely, yeah. So, so the dot, dot, dot slash controller then, it, wh where does it look for that file? It looks in, it, it sees, it's running in adagoric slash swing set that. That's what it thinks import meta URL is basically. And so adagoric swing set that. Okay, so so it is resolving to adagoric slash swing set that slash um, controller. Uh, and, and what we could do is we could do a... Um, no, a that's... It's uh, solid. The, the, the current file, the index.js, is adagoric slash swing set that. So when it does dot slash, then it sees, oh, my current path is adagoric swing set that dot must be adagoric and then slash controller must be adagoric slash controller. Um, so we're talking here about the module being a file, not, not a package. Yeah, because in node, you have the, node, the notion of packages and then the file that is found is where the lookups are done from. Okay, so, so Michael, let me, Michael, I just to clarify, I just want to understand. Um, so, 
can one account for the behavior of Node uh, in terms of there being first a self-contained mapping, you know, an algorithmic mapping from relative specifiers to absolute specifiers that does not consult outside information followed by a mapping from absolute specifiers to module locations that does consult outside information? Or is it the case that node cannot be, the first step cannot be explained without consulting outside information? So in, in node, if we use a relative specifier, then it's, my understanding is it doesn't need to read the file system to know where to go. But if we use adagoric slash swimset for example, that looks up via the package.json which file it should actually look up. So adagoric slash swingset that is is mapped to the package adagoric swingset that slash package.json. And then we see that source index is what the the main entry point is. So could we pop back over to the uh, the import of dot slash controller? And I just want to show, or actually the import of Adagoric swing set that, that would be the ideal. Sorry, one last question. But, um, sorry, sorry. I'm, I'm just, I'll just I, I, I didn't understand Michael's answer. Okay, so uh, I, 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 the, the thing I wanted to clarify in the answer is which step is from relative specifier to absolute, you know, which, which name is an absolute specifier and which name is a module location? Because going from absolute, nothing to absolute. absolute. <laughs> so, yeah, if, if you look at that, the line just four lines down, five lines down, import all that from Adagoric swing set VAT. Node internally looks up a package.json and translates that to adagoric slash swings dash vat slash source slash index.js. Okay. Not, not that and top one. It, that top one is what uh, model does. But here, if you add the slash source okay. slash index.js, that's exactly what. Okay. And, and, and that longer thing with the slash source slash index.js, that's an absolute specifier or that's a module location? Uh, so it's not an absolute specifier. I'm just saying that in, because Modable is conflating specifiers with locations, the only way we have to make it behave the same as node is to change that adagoric slash swing side bat to okay. be I'm swing side bat slash source slash index. I'm still asking a question about node Okay. Not, yeah. a, not about XS. I'm trying to find out if nodes behavior in mapping from relative specifier to absolute specifier has to consult this package information, or if we can account for nodes behavior with a self-contained algorithmic theory of mapping from relative specifier to absolute specifier followed by a mapping that does consult outside information uh, to get from absolute specifier to module location. I'm just, I'm, I'm just asking a question about yeah. what theory do we need to account for what node actually does? So the theory that I had with, uh, with make importer is that the first thing it does is it takes that adagoric slash swing set that and it translates that into an absolute path name. And then within the context of the, that module, that absolute okay. path and, name and, is the, the swing set bat module, that source index. Mark, your question was about okay. relative specifiers, right? So, so, to, so, so the, yeah, it's, well, the relationship between uh, uh, relative specifier, okay, Michael's module uh, make importer system um, uh, has two separate steps in the mapping. And I'm trying to understand the nature of those two steps such that they're adequate to account for nodes behavior. Okay. Uh, and so, let, me, let me just play back what I think I just heard to make sure I understand. Sure. Um, the, 
uh, node will map Atagoric slash swing set as a as a relative specifier to no, Atagoric the bear specifier. Bear bear specifier. Yeah. So where do where does bear specifier show up in your theory? So that's a that's a platform dependent thing, and it's specified as such in the in the ESM in the ESM specs. So Node's way of mapping bear specifiers is to look up directories in Node modules and find packaged adjacents in order to translate that into an absolute path. And that absolute path is, is the re refer. This is this is what I was trying to get to. Is the refer for a given module is its absolute path for the refer. Okay. And so when we do relative paths from that, we use the absolute path to, that the refer gave us. Okay. So to map from relative specifier to absolute specifier, you have to be able to map to absolute path. Mm -hmm. And to map to absolute path, you have to consult outside information. So to account uh, for nodes behavior, you can't have a purely algorithmic mapping from relative, relative specifier to absolute specifier. To from bare specifier. The problem is bare okay. specifiers. Okay. The, so, so in terms of, so Michael, what oh. does bare specifier correspond to in the make importer theory? So bare specifier is locate. Relative and absolute specifier is resolve. So resolving dot slash controller from source index gives you source controller. That's what that resolve step does. By resolving adagoric slash swing set that from anywhere has to pass further down to the locate step. And that's where we say that, okay. that adagoric slash swing set that gets rewritten to be a module location based on what is, what is in the file system. So um, I'm just going to take two seconds. I'm going to say, I'm sorry, like there's so many flags going in my head of questions and, and I don't want to interrupt, but I would love to actually get a few minutes after whenever I can interrupt. Um, I'm just going to mute until then. Um, because okay. yeah, conceptually, yeah, I'm, so I'm struggling with, with a few things and we're, we're really, you know, brushing over them. All right. I'm mute. Okay. Uh, thank you, Sal. I just, I just want to, to, um, uh, continue on this thread until I feel like I understand the answer. Sure. So, um, so Michael, in this make importer thing that we have on the screen in front of us, mm -hmm. the uh, uh, it, first of all, can we write, resolve, and locate, etc., functions such that uh, we create an importer that accounts for what node actually does. With a, with a manifest, yes, we can. Because the locate step can be done with a manifest or with a file system lookup for bare, bare specifiers. Okay. The resolve so step is the... just pure math. That's just the relative uh, absolute path applied with the relative specifier gives you another absolute path. Okay, that's, that's exactly what I was trying to, to understand. So the extension of Atagoric slash swing set into Atagoric slash swing set slash source slash index, that extension does not happen in the resolve path step. It happens in the locate step. Is that correct? Yeah, so this module location um, that locate returns, uh, would be like an absolute path. So it's not even mapping to adagoric slash swing set slash controller or something. It's mapping to file colon slash slash home something or other something all the way down. That's what a module location actually looks like. So it's the locate step so, that gets rid of that bare specifier and makes it always a module location. Okay. So the, so the, so the concept of a bare specifier would be internal to the locate step? Yes. Okay, it, the bare specifier is neither an absolute specifier nor a module location. It would just be part of the internal logic of the locate step. Yeah, that's my understanding. 
Question? Okay, good. Thank you. I, 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 I feel like I, 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 that was what I needed answered. Thanks. Uh, uh, Michael, why is this in this type not the same type? Is this one here and this one here. The absolute specifier in the module location? Yeah, well, so you look up Atagoric, blah, 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 and you get a big long path. I'm willing to call that a module location. Then mm -hmm. when I look up dot slash source, I would expect to have that here. So, uh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, here, here's the uh, here's the separation that that um, of resolve and, and locate. Okay, so resolve is meant to operate in the virtual sp uh, scopes. Uh, it, it should not uh, anticipate the need um, to call the disk by default. You you could you could wire it as such, but you know resolve was meant to be completely separate from locate. Um, uh, in that locate is where we do uh, disk access. If you want to do disk access otherwise, um, you know, they were designed not to require it, um, which, which works well with the manifest and with the concept of scoped packages as bare specifier. Um, however, um, unlike Node.js's resolve, where it would take the refer as a absolute location, like a module location, uh, in order for our separation to work, resolve should be completely, um, um, uh, you know, um, um, agnostic to actual locations. It should only be aware of, um, uh, you know, it's it's mapped virtual locations or or absolute specifiers that are scoped, and they are all just a virtual mapping at that point. Um, and when you give that to locate, it will return a module location that you will then retrieve literally. You will do a fetch or you will do an FS uh, read. Um, so, so this separation is why, you know, um, the idea of those two functions, um, um, be, you know, becomes useful. Um, and, and I think, um, I don't know if it answered the question you, you were asking, but um, it is expected that you would get a, a, an actual location out of locate, um, and it's expected that that location would never be used with the resolve function. Okay, so uh, uh, is this sensible so far that dot slash controller might be a specifier? Yes, well, specifier is whatever the user specifies in the import statement. Okay, and then if I were going to resolve dot slash controller, I would expect to have a path here, right? Okay, so in this case, we wouldn't. We'd have categoric slash swing set that is the second argument. By the way, whose screen are we seeing projected? This is a uh, dance. Okay. Okay, so I now now I see. But I thought you said you could do resolve just with math. Yeah, that, that's how it works, right? So, so resolve with math will basically resolve. Okay, so what's the answer to this then? Adagoric slash controller. Uh, no. Yeah. That's, that's what modable would do, but it's not necessarily what the resolve function has to do. Well, the so resolve in, function in this case, has to do it that way because the resolve function is based on new, new URL, argument A, argument B. But it instruments uh, that by adding file um, uh, colon slash slash uh, on the referrer, and then it chops it off the um, the result. Yeah. Error. Okay. So let me let me go up back one step just to kind of explain this. So absolute specifier and module location, it, they don't have to be different things. They don't have to, but but they can but, be, but they don't have to. Okay. But, but, but that let me give a specific example. So let's go back to this specific right. example. Then I'm gonna we'll say that my hair now. I'm I'm going to start pulling my hair because I'm, I'm really <laughs> holding back on something very vital, and it's driving me crazy. Sorry, sorry. I, I'm just going to be very very um, typical myself. Um, there's a problem with the fact that we're using categoric slash and then we're actually specifying file names. If if we want to start, there's actually no file called swing set dash vat. No, like an at. In a bare specifier, 
A bare specifier in, in convention comes from Node.js, either starts with a package name slash whatever, and you can omit the slash whatever if there's an index or a main file, or it starts with an at scope slash package slash whatever, but then you can omit that slash whatever with an index or, or a main field in a package JSON. So the fact that we're doing scope slash specifier is completely screwing up with, with um, you know, um, the mental. So, yeah, and, and the reason we're doing this is we're trying to get it to work on Modable, which doesn't have these notions. Yeah, well, if it doesn't have that's, it. That's the only reason we're doing this. We're trying to make it better. So I, I understand. I understand. I'm, I'm, I'm not complaining about that, but I'm just saying that um, could we have two slashes in the module map uh, on the top half of this screen? Are, are we like forget, I would like to forget um, Modable for a second. Yeah. yeah. So I'll tell you what Make Importer does for its examples. Yeah. Refer in this case, absolute specifier is always a file call in URL. Right. So that's why this didn't make any wait, sense to me. Wait, 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 wait. The, um, so it's the absolute specifier is a file call in URL, then you're not getting from relative specifier to absolute specifier in a purely algorithmic manner. You, you are we consulting. Are. The, yeah, you are. You are. We are. Yeah. How do you get from? So uh, Dan, if you want to, yeah, that's right. Bear or one. absolute specifier, I think, is the right word here, because the bear specifier is a variant of an absolute specifier. It is not an absolute location. It's an absolute right. specifier. This fits my met one mental model I could adopt. Uh, I'm sorry, where did file, how did file colon appear in the absolute specifier? That's what revolve, that's what resolve returns as the absolute specifier. The, but the, the re resolve being purely algorithmic is not looking at the file system. No, so it's just looking at, it's looking at the, the file colon, blah, 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 and translating it into another file colon. It's it's resolving that oh, 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 oh. relative specifier starting, against the absolute specifier. Right, well, you're always starting with an absolute specifier, so you're okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So okay. just okay. like the URL object in, in in the browser, it does that. The first argument can be relative, and the second argument would be absolute. And if the first argument is relative, it will in you know it will be relatively resolved based on the refer to become an absolute of that refer um, and the file colon slash is how we, um, you know, we, we can write this function in one line of code basically. Um, and, you know, we just wrap a new URL constructor and then we return the path name. Yeah, which, which is what make importer was doing as its examples. Okay, so, so, so if the refer that we were starting with were HTTP colon instead of file colon, then mm -hmm. it would just propagate the HTTP colon in the same way. Exactly, yeah. Okay, okay. And obviously here you would HTTP colon slash slash dummy slash whatever and then trim that out because uh, HTTP uh, URL construction expects a, a domain or a, you know, a, a host. Yeah, and then you trim that out, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so locate is the actual thing that says Ah, we've got this source index that becomes. Uh, well, and we also do pasting of the .js file and stuff like that. In in locate. Uh, could be. In this example. Um. Uh, I'm not sure in this example where we did that. Whether it was resolved for locate. The fact that these things use URL syntax is suggesting that the, I mean, that if you dereference this as a URL, if you did a, you know, an HTTP get with this URL, would you? You know, the, the URL syntax suggests that, that, that the thing that's named by the string interpreted as a URL is the thing that you intend to name. 
Yeah, and that's that's why I think that in the resolve step we were actually using a, a refer that had a .js on it, for example. Oh, yeah. Um, explicit extensions are are a very very nice way to reduce the noise. Um, but then controller, wh where would it get the JS, um, um, Michael? Like wh where does controller get that JS? So right now that's right now that can't be done with just the math. But in the way that I'm suggesting, we would either have dot slash controller slash, or else we'd specify dot slash controller index dot JS. Um, may I suggest um, that would be part of the resolve? And the resolve would need a third yeah. parameter that says, um, 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 I guess uh, there's a word that they use in, in the fetch layer, um, destination. Destination uh, import. And then we would know that. Mm. No, I, I th the, the resolve that I was proposing was basically, if it ends in a slash, add index. And if it doesn't end in JS, add JS. Oh, OK. All right. Oh man, yeah. So sorry, I'm I'm aliasing node uh, modules discussions. We we, <laughs> we completely got rid of the index notion in the ESM implementation. Now you could flag it in, but um, yeah. So uh, now now it's all based on the main and exports in the package J, uh, JSON. So all right. JS is the only allowable extension. What if it's like EJS or whatever? Whatever. Oh, no, you, you're allowed. MJS by default implies ECMAScript module. CJS by default implies CommonJS module. That was really why I joined. You know, when they said MJS, I said, no, CJS, and I joined, and then they stopped talking to me. Uh, anyways. Um, <laughs> right, but in the step, the step is just done with math. I don't understand how you could add an extension. No, it's, so, it's, so, it's not necessarily math, Dan. Is that the the whole thing with the make importer is you say this is the module system I want to have, and what I was doing in the test suites for make importer was saying this looks like a reasonable module system for the uses that we have at Agoric, and that's where I was saying we either have to add .js everywhere or we do it in the result. So it, it, it's something people learn when you know, right? The yeah, I'm, I'm confused about what you're saying. The, going back to the question, not what do we do in the Agoric test suite, or what do we need for Agoric, or what do we what or or what does the spec allow? Um, I, but just specifically for the question of uh, what is needed to model nodes' behavior. File nodes system behavior, access. I'm sorry. File system access for sure. Yeah, but in which step? Resolve in, and look. Every step. <laughs> really? Okay. Okay. That's what. I, that's okay. I, I, that was the thing I was trying to ask before, and I thought you were giving me the opposite answer. Uh, I okay. You, I thought you. I thought you were saying that we can account for nodes' behavior using the make importer theory, with that's the resolve the step that's being that's purely that's algorithmic. That's we can do that too. The the reason why it becomes tricky is because. Then we have to say our referrers do include bare specifiers. But node, node uh, by the way, the, uh, the old resolver is, is, is done. So, so the new resolver doesn't do the same stuff the old one does by default. Like it does not actually add .js for you. You cannot resolve without .js um, unless you actually call a package main entry point that is a separate thing, and that is technically done by manifest. The fact that it loads the manifest from disk lazily um, it does not mean that in our model here, uh, it would actually need the disk. It would know ahead of time what the main of a package is, and that could mm -hmm. omit the extension. But, but, but it cannot resolve the extension um, uh, without having that mapping in the manifest um, which it can Explicit. generate lazily now, but but here it wouldn't. So, uh, Salah, the the resolve step, the resolve versus locates. Can you, can, can, uh, if you were to account for nodes' current behavior 
using the make importer theory. Yeah. Could you do, could you do it with a resolve step that was purely algorithmic? Yes, yes. But he, here's here's where we have to um, we have to first say there are two behaviors for resolving uh, in Node. One behavior that that is lingering and is very very favorable, but it's the common JS behavior for which we used um, sugaring or whatever you want to call it, babbling or some you know some some tool that made it look like magic and it added extensions and it did all these things with disk access, whatever it could. With that the behavior, okay. Yeah, okay. but that that's the that's that's a sugaring of the modules, uh, the ECMAScript module syntax on top of common JS resolve. And, and I think this world was, was really ugly. I, I couldn't do it. So uh, the new world where the resolve of, the, of, the, of running ECMAScript module code in Node by default, it expects when you import from to explicitly put the extension if it's a path to a file. Um, it also gives you the luxury of relying on, on package bare specifiers that say import something from package for where for which it will either use the main entry if, if the package was you know called uh, directly as a bare specifier of the package it will but it will look up just to just to add here you're you're saying when you're saying the main entry you're saying the metadata for the package right like it had this been um, um, Adagoric slash swing set dash vat in node modules, then I would expect that folder in node modules to have a package.json. And that package.json has a main field that, uh, that uh, maps to dot slash src slash index dot js. Right? Uh, yeah, that works. Now, that you know the main field here the module field is irrelevant the main field is the one that node.js would look up um, as an ECMAScript module uh, project if you run this as cjs that's the scenario i'm not going to talk about much you know that's the one where we're, we're all expecting it to auto resolve extensions and whatever that is done with um, you could use loaders you could use flags to bring back things from the common JS era, but I think that complicates our um, our design um, by, by opinions and preferences that are not going to be on by default and can sometimes be tricky to rely on. Um, and it is not on by default in the existing uh, node behavior regarding yes. ECMAScript modules. Yes, it's been a year and a few months that we, you know, fought to make sure that, yeah, all, all tricks don't come. Um, the, the, the cost for, for having them in the ESM system was to break compatibility with browsers. And, and so, so it was a really hard battle to make sure, um, you know, people, people will have to get used to this. Um, because without flags, there is no extension resolution. The, okay. only, the only resolution that happens that looks like an extension resolution is, as you can see here, the main points to a file with an extension. And that means it will load the file with an extension. If you remove the extension from the package, it will throw an error and it will tell you like, yeah, you, you, there is no main. You maybe you meant to say main.js. Uh, so it will not auto add the extension at any point by default. Um, so I, I think what uh, the model system is conflating that is separate within the node system is this re resolution of the top level entry point of a package. So among other things, the mo well, the modable system, it seems to be working on all, all the package references can be done with math on the, on the uh, specifier. Right. And if we had somewhere a map between package specifier and some relative or absolute path that that would correspond to within the modules map. Yeah. 
scope and that would give us yeah a scope zone. and and just one uh, okay so i was looking at uh, we, we talked it? about scopes, right? We we had that in, in one of the docs we worked on at some point, and then we said it's it's an enhancement, really. But but scopes are exactly that, that the resolve will always start with a scope, and a scope is something that can actually point to a different um, prefix of a module location. Um, so, you know, you can say that all scopes exist virtually in the root, um, and then you can... Uh, double dot slash from any scope, and then say slash the other scope. Um, and that means you, you've, you know, you've mapped it to a completely different prefix in the module location, um, but it's still relatively resolved without any disk access at that point. So yeah, if we had this uh, resolution of scopes as a separate pre-step in the module system, then we could do everything with the module map and we wouldn't have conflicts of prefixes or anything. Yes. A hundred percent, yes. And that still isn't using the three column representation that, that Brian was talking about for Jetpack because we're not actually changing the algorithmic way of finding modules. We're just saying here's an pre additional pre-step that determines the prefix that you're dealing with in the module system. With, with that approach, your specifiers will match the, um, the current existing um, uh, package res resolution module that is in most IDEs. So technically speaking, if you, if you define your packages in your package JSON at the root of your scope, um, then everything should resolve correctly because they use uh, scoped resolutions, uh, not literal ones. At least VS Code with uh, TypeScript uh, running the show does that, yeah. So in our in our pre steps here, um, we have a choice of two different ways of doing the resolve locate step. That we could either say resolve produces what could be a scoped specifier, so add a gorg slash swing set slash something, or else we could say you provide metadata to resolve that tells it how to resolve those scoped specifiers. Where that metadata uh, comes from, like a package.json or something. Or the manifest, or whatever it is. Yeah. Okay. If it comes from package.json, then it has to be done in the locate step, because yeah, that's I, when we can actually. I I disagree. Sorry. That's what no. Node does. But what you want to do is you want to consider package.json's of scopes to be things that are in a secure environment. Those are things that are predetermined. You're not going to get random package.json um, files. Uh, after you start running your your um, secure environment, you would actually get it first um, from this whatever, or you put them all in one big lump of um, scopes.json or something. Um, and and so technically speaking, no, you don't need to hit that package package.json's. Um, and I would argue that even if you're virtualizing this in Node, you also want to start your um, compartment. With package JSONs already there, um, um, not necessarily the actual module files, which I argue you should. Um, but uh, yeah, package JSON lazily loaded in Node is for a completely separate um, perk. Um, you know, the fact that they don't want you to preload everything; they want to be lazy on everything. So uh, I'm sorry. Like I don't mean to be very um, strong worded in this. Um, sorry about that. I just got excited. Uh, OK, I have, I'm just going to show this very briefly. Um, I'll steal from you, Dan, and then we can send it back to you. Uh, 
so this is in the imports map specifier specification. Um, and they basically say bare specifiers or scope specifiers, you give them. Uh, I'm sorry, what, 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 are, I'm sorry what, what document are we looking at? This, this is the import section? maps, uh, the web import oh, maps. The, okay. okay. So the way they do it is their import map has, what do you get when you just specify a bare specifier? And that you, you get source moment.js. And then what you get if you do a slash of that, and it gives you something different. So then they can do the, the, the calculations with just path map, math on the paths. And when they get something like moment slash something rather, they resolve it to a different place than just moment. And they would be doing this mapping if you, so if you want to account for this behavior using the make import theory. Mm -hmm. um, then we specify um, this map to the resolve step. To the resolve step, okay. There is, there is a link to an equivalent um, um, thing that is actually our, our side of, of uh, thinking of this problem. So browsers do whatever they need, but uh, there's a link I pasted. And if you could open, um, if you could open it, Michael, it, it's the exports map. It's the flip side of this because that's that's what's going to be in package JSON files moving forward, and it works for common JS too. If you know that's that's the module system we feel more inclined to indulge. But um, so yeah, if you scroll all the way down to any example, uh, yeah, that's good. So so I think. This, this can be part of the, the stuff you scrub to generate your manifests. And the manifest is really like a virtual um, uh, lookup table of your virtual module space. Um, it doesn't have to be explicit for every module. You can still have an, a wild card um, or you made the wild card by adding the slash. That's the convention, I guess. Um, yeah, so so package JSONs will have the exports field, um, and Node.js uses those to resolve. It loads the package JSON before it starts to resolve against the package. Um, it's considered really a, uh, a a lazy step, but it's not a locate. It's it's a pre-locate. It's it's before you start resolving against the package. Um. So maybe the best thing to do would be to get back to somebody like Peter Hadi and ask, how does your module system compare to the imports or the exports, export maps of these other systems? And uh, I'm sure he's looked at them at least before. Um, Sorry, what would you want to know from him? Uh, just just to see what what the design of the module uh, module map how it compares to the import map or the export map of browsers or node. It, it's using I, loops. I, I mean, I think I know how it works. Um, I'm not sure what information he has that I don't. Uh, I'm just thinking of this kind of thing where you could specify a, a slash and then it would look up something different from the regular one. Oh, he, he puts an asterisk, right? And then that, uh, that actually hits the disk. Um, there's no hitting the disk at lookup time. I mean, at runtime. Yeah. Well, it uh, preloads everything in that folder. If there's a if there's a wild card, it ends with an asterisk. Then it will basically like if you go back to your manifest. I'm pretty sure I saw. Uh, oh, so we switched actually screens. So uh, I'm pretty sure I saw wild card mappings in in the manifest that we were looking at. The one that had yes. four. Yeah, that says compile all the JS in this folder. Yeah, exactly. yeah. So, so that means it creates really uh, module map entries for every single .js or every single JavaScript file yeah. in that yeah. folder. Right. But I, I would suggest that what we need is not that, but rather the ability to say this specific string, if it appears, like look for the longest matching prefix, essentially, so that we can say the package is mapped to this top level thing but then within the package has a different mapping. 
Right, you could talk about different designs, but I, uh, is that what you want to ask, Peter? I, I want to ask if we can do it if we can do it this way already, or if if we need to be able to do something different, like so we don't have to have this, so that we can separate the con the conflation of the the bare specifier and the relative specifier. Is this a question of fact about how Modable operates? If so, I can answer it. Yeah, that'd be great. Okay, and the question uh, is? The question is, can you do something like foo slash is a different map? Down. Okay, I will. Uh, I'll share again. I think I could. What is the definition of a bare specifier? It doesn't start with dot or slash. Or, yeah. Or okay. or protocols. Uh, if it has a protocol, it cannot be bare. Uh, if it has a protocol colon slash, like protocol has a colon, and then if there's a slash after that, it, it's considered not bare. But Node does it wrong at this point. So bare specifiers are things like moment, uh, adagoric, adagoric slash swing set dot. Yeah. I really thought it was just dot or slash. I didn't realize it was anything about protocols. Well, technically speaking, you can have a folder in your node modules that says a file colon whatever, and that's the folder name. As long as it doesn't have a slash, it can be a folder name. Um, so technically speaking, the only restriction on, on bare specifier is whether or not it can be a folder inside node modules. Um, and if it starts with the at, that's a very, very specific convention that comes from NPM. Um, and that's uh, scopes. They used to call them orgs. Now, you know, they call them. Right, but never mind Node. The browser has a notion of a bare specifier, right? Uh, it's in the standard, is it? Te no, technically in the module uh, standard, there is no notion of bare specifier. It I know my browser will tell me you can't do that. It's a bare specifier. <laughs> It tells you you cannot have non-absolute and non-relative specifiers, but right. you could you could start it with a double. It calls them bare. <laughs> yeah, it does call it bare. Yeah, yeah well, yeah. it's aliasing, right? So, 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 eighty percent of the you know the node people are in Google, and you know, so so there's aliasing of error messages, nothing more. <laughs> okay, uh, so I was doing this. Index dot yes. I'm having a problem because I have to charge my headphones at the same time as I'm typing. Okay, so this is what I would like to see in the in the. Uh... So I know this won't work currently. So you could do that with an import map. But uh, yeah, that's the that's the difference that we need in order to say we can import adequate swing set that, and then if we do relative to there, we get to a different directory. So if you're asking questions of fact about the about um, how model works, you can't have mm -hmm. anything that ends in .js unless the file actually ends in .js .js. Yeah, it will. Oh, in JS JS. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, yeah, so, so the. the, the there's two steps to the, what Modelable does. They have a, a tool at build time that takes the um, the uh, manifest file, the excess manifest file. I get the impression that there's other kinds of manifests in this conversation. It takes the excess manifest file, um, looks up a bunch of files, and runs them through the compiler and the linker. Mm -hmm. um, uh, well, in particular, it runs them through the compiler, in which case you get that directory tree. Um, and then the you know runs the linker and you get this thing and then at runtime, there there is a there's an actual hook they'll let you write but the by default it does the you know dot slash or dot dot slash inside the tree that was that was created uh, in that temp build directory, right? At least a virtual version you know a, a runtime a RAM version of it. Um, so the the tool the MC config tool that runs at build time. It always appends .js to JavaScript files. It won't run it through the compiler unless it can, can take the thing on the right, add .js, and, and find a file. Ouch. <laughs> they shouldn't do that. 
they really like 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 this is this is like saying we are assuming there's only .js in this world. No, well, for JavaScript, right. And if it's a .c file, they put the C compiler. And if it's a .jpg file, they JPEG. Oh, so they look up the file and whatever, whatever uh, they have, like, you know, if, if, if you remove .js from index here on line three, um, line three ends with .js in the end, right? So if I omit this, then in that folder, there were .js, .c, .json, um, you know, um, dot nothing like without dot if there were the four files there does it look up that the four files are there and then it picks the one that has higher precedence in resolution i'd have to check it might do both the js and the c i'm not sure okay because because that that becomes uh, um the the difference is it it does not append .js. It just takes all the files that have that and that plus extension. Well, and if you have a file called just index, it won't care. You won't notice that one. OK, so it's extension first. This is an extension first resolution system. Yeah. It says that um, you know, file type is what the extension is. Yep. OK, OK. Um, OK, that makes more sense. Uh, so I think you're right. It will take the C and the JS, and it will leave the bare index. Um, the second part of, of the question I think that Michael is getting at, can we, on the left-hand side of the mapping, can we have a, um, uh, a file specifier, which doesn't end with a slash? And then can we add? After it, another mapping that ends with a slash, and I think it will be or even a star. Card. Yeah, maybe even a star file card. Yeah, and then okay. This so that is, if you put a star on both sides, on both sides. Star. Okay. Yeah, that is uh, the syntax this tool uh, supports, and it'll it'll uh, build time enumerate the directory on the right minus the star, find all the .c and .js and whatever our other files are, and put in compile them. Yeah, but there's a, actually there's a hidden uh, mapping here. There's a subtle mapping missing here. Uh, could you put the SRC back? There, there's a subtle thing missing here. There are going to be two entries for categoric swing set that and categoric swing set that slash index. Both of them should be pointing to the same module record based on this mapping. They are not two separate files mm. based on uh, them pointing to the same original file. Uh, they, they are separate specifiers, but they did point to one, one resource when, when, this, um, when this environment was um, you know, configured. Um, so are we saying that separate specifiers for the same resource are separate resources? In the and the excess runtime, or are they mm -hmm. considered two specifiers to the same location? That you'll you at, so what would go in the build directory? Um, there would be one module called slash agoric slash swing set vat dot xsb or whatever their bytecode directory is, and then there would be another one agoric swing set vat index xsb. So you get two. And that okay. would create a resolution problem for packages that we scope in this way. If we, if we have two entries pointing to the index of a package, the only one that will ever point to the index of a package without a, without a slash is going to be the one that doesn't have anything next to it in the same directory other than um, uh, swings, at, sorry, other, yeah. Um, th that will always have a dot slash pointing at Atagoric. Uh, yeah, so I'm thinking that my solution for this was probably something that we need to do. Well, if you want to live with the constraints of, of, of modable as it is, that's a solution. Yeah. yeah, just because we can't mess with the map at all until unless we change that works. how their build system works. Right? That's beautiful. Well, nothing wrong here. <laughs> and then we then we just bypass the whole package resolution and call it as uh, plain 
But you want to remove src slash here because you, you've omitted src slash. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's right. No, that's like, right. like that, uh, on line six. On line six. You want to back was. Either, either. Yeah, either this or that. I would rather. It, this works under node as well. You can't do the other. No, the other works under node if you say a module.export. Yeah, I don't um, want to do that. Dot no. slash, <laughs> colon, um, you know, string dot slash src slash. That's it. You don't have to worry about anything but one entry at this point. Yeah. So I don't know if this was the if, if the goal was to figure out in, in the intersection of constraints for Agoric's work or to figure out something about standards, but um, it's educational in both cases. But yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, there's a question of are a bunch of Agoric engineers going to make such changes? <laughs> uh, oh well, which is relevant to my the, life. Yeah, and and, and this uh, this I can talk with Brian about too and Jeff. Yeah. Clearly, and it's and it's up to you, Mark. Too, if uh, if if we want to just abandon the the clever uh, punning that we get, if we if we don't use if we use just plain package names without any specifier after that, but, uh, we either have to fix modable and possibly other things, or not. So the. So I want to approach this question from a standards first perspective, mm -hmm. uh, which is um, we want to propose something concrete to the committee as a general JavaScript uh, for a general JavaScript set of mechanisms for expressing things like compartments and rewirings of imports in order yeah. to do POLA. I mean, the whole, the, the real goal here is a standards supported mechanism for expressing POLA linkage of modules. Yeah. And it needs to uh, be adequate for nodes needs it needs to be adequate for lava moats needs. It needs to be adequate for uh, Gorex needs. Uh, and it needs to be something that is, uh, that, that either is something that um, Modable uh, is willing to um, uh, accept or that there's some subset that uh, fits with what Modable is willing mm -hmm. to accept and what Modable needs, uh, where the, you know, there's an optional, you know, where the, the stuff that uh, Agoric needs on top of Modable um, might be, you know, configurable optional things, especially since Modable is already so well set up for, for you know, having things that are optional that are normally left out but can be configured in, like runtime evaluators. Um, so, the, the, so I want I want to hit sort of all, all, yeah I want to hit all, all well the so browser standards I don't care about what I care about is JavaScript standards and and uh, supporting browser behavior such as for the lava mode use case um, the if right. somebody if, wants to in the interest of of time one could just copy their spec and see if there's any problem. Copy so, whose spec? The, we were looking at it earlier, I think. We saw some sort of module import thing that. Oh, the import map stuff from Gudges? Yeah, yeah. The, the import map stuff we, uh, might be a good starting point and certainly something we should be taking into account. It's but we know, that it's, we, know, we know that it's inadequate by itself yeah. to express least authority linkage of modules, but so is any of these manifests. The manifests themselves are not try, trying to express least authority linkage. Yeah. So Do we have a, like a test case that shows the, or a screw case, some document. I didn't know that there, that was the case. The, the so the the compartment API is 
um, uh, is you know the the way in which we're trying to create something that can that can uh, in general express least authority linkage, and since it's a procedural API, it can do it with significant generality. Um, uh, and then there's the tofu style manifests that both Bradley and Kumavis are generating. Um, um, I, and I actually have a hard stop, but uh, I, I want to continue this clearly, but I, I don't know uh, if there's anything else that you can point me at that um, I guess I can watch the rest of the recording too when we're done. Um, uh, so right now I'm just enumerating goals. I don't know that I actually have a lot to point anybody at right now. Okay. Um, uh, the, 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 the thing that demonstrates that the manifests by itself are not doing least authority linkage is that they're not saying anything at all about which modules should see which global scopes. <laughs> Um, so, could I could I just say that this has been something, like like I've I've really been thinking of that um, notion for for so long, um, because when I joined Node, my problem was I needed both the browser and Node um, to be predictably um, um, configurable in some way, um, and and so. Node's uh, approach, um, luckily, was, was inclined to actually do away with legacy things that made interop with the browser almost impossible, actually impossible, hence Webpack and, you know, everything else. Um, the uh, import maps is not um, inadequate except in one thing. It, uh, it, um, it has a, a, a very stipulative definition of what a scope is because they are browsers. And for them, scopes are basically um, defined as the origin or a service worker scope. And in both cases, they are considered as loose uh, trees separate from each other. However, uh, an adequate module map um, for, that would prevent authority leakages has to recognize that uh, no package can alter uh, a resource that, can, that does not exist in its own boundary um, in mapping. And so what was missing um, was to say um, you have scopes. Um, and th while they do have scopes, um, their module map, the import map itself, does not honor that, um, that I cannot manipulate the mappings that are specified by a package because that concept does not exist in import maps. Um, so if you could override a file under a specifier that is uh, coming from a different server, uh, then you, you, you actually start to, um, to violate all kinds of uh, security models. Um, they say, well, you're the author of the import map, you should know what you're doing. Um, and I guess this is where we differ in, in our, um, you know, end use. Um, um, you know, they're focused on the end use being the developer who wrote the import map. Um, we're, we're thinking of packages as things that cannot be, um, you know, hinted by, out, by the outside world, maybe. Um, the idea of the module, um, the the module resolution layer, being the place that prevents um, any kind of um, overrides between packages, um, I believe is the only secure way, and I believe this is how you can make a compartment secure. Um, Could you go through an example? Sure. Um, so. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna do a good job sharing my screen and trying an example here, but I'll, I'll try. It's been a while. Um, I see your screen. Oh, all right, so let's go to Markdown. All right, so um, 
So let's say we want to create um, a module map. A module map is basically specifier. Uh, I have a new keyboard, and I'm apparently it's an old one, uh, the old layout. Specifier, uh, and then uh, location, right? So, so this is what a module map is, right? Okay. Um, it does things like that. But then a, a, a scope map is basically is the module map you're making up now, or somebody else made this up. Like, like just conceptually speaking, a module map would be specifier on the left hand side, location on the right hand side. So you're yeah. defining this here now. Yeah, like, okay. like just, okay. uh, just uh, conceptually speaking. But then sure. a scoped um, module map is as follows. Uh, it starts with scope. And then in it, it would have specifier, you know, it would have inside it a module map. Um, and I can have more of those. So, so, you know, we're doing JSON apparently. I didn't know that this is what my brain was doing, sorry. <laughs> um, it's like JSON, it's not really JSON, whatever. Um, and now it becomes JSON and it doesn't complain. Um, but then I can add another scope, right? Uh, I can say um, scope B. And this goes here. And then I would say specifier uh, location and I, I'm using location here just just to be very very abstract. Uh, did I mess up something about JSON that I forgot here somewhere? Ah, JSON starts. Uh, oh. Okay, there we go. Um, so the difference between the top part. The top part and the bottom part. Um, let, me, let me just, what do you mean by scope? Okay, so by scope, I'm saying that at some point, scope A um, scopes. All right. I think this will make it. Um, by saying scopes in my resolution layer, I end up with re resolving the um, the module like this. So resolve will give this. Um, and that is technically a bare specifier that is scoped. Um, and when this goes to locate, what was the input to resolve? Uh, we can say module.js. And this now becomes JS. And um, this would be scope A slash uh, module slash index dot JS. Um, so this would be a um, All right, and um, this will give
Did I get disconnected? Uh, no, I'm, I, I hear you. Yeah, sorry, I got disconnected for some reason. Um, okay. So, so when, when did when did it get interrupted? Because I'm I'm not sure when the connection dropped. Uh, yeah, you were you were silent and your screen was um, not moving for about a minute, maybe. All right. So so yeah. So I I guess so that part you know I was still working on the first example, right? Yes. Okay. So so in this resolution, this is straightforward, right? I'm saying resolve. Uh, this is a dot slash. Um, and maybe I can do this. So, so what is happening here is I'm getting the result specifier um, of the dot slash, and I'm, I'm um, doing this in index.js inside scope A. Okay, so this is import from dot slash module.js. It will return a result specifier, whatever that is, um, that represents the string um, that has been resolved. That sounds good? Yes. Right, and then the next step would be, okay, give me the URL so I can go fetch this and you know we can actually return a string that will be evaluated against the module map of, of the resolved specifier. The key is this, and the source is coming from this, but the runtime itself is, you know, this is a, a fetch layer detail that the runtime itself, um, the module map itself should be absent from, like it shouldn't have any details on. Mm -hmm. um, so, so, okay, so, so, so on your line 27, the call to resolve, yeah. does, does the call to resolve that you have in mind here is that informed by the um, JSON manifest above, or is that yes. algorithmic? Yeah, that's that's informed by this part here. Uh, sorry, it is informed. That, sorry, that's informed purely by this part. It is informed by that part. Okay. Yeah. So, so there are some ex examples that are. Um, that you know, this would become clearer. Um, okay, so in the example code that we were looking at before, something like at Agoric would be a scope. Uh, actually, the ampersand has a connotation from NPM. Sorry, the at sign has a con connotation that is, um, that has, has a very, very strong convention. In NPM, any uh, bare specifier that starts with an at is a different kind of scope. Uh, that's a package scope. I'm sorry, that's a, a um, an organization scope or a user scope. Uh, any packages in it should all should always be followed after a slash. So you do add scope okay. slash package. So if you don't include an add sign, then it could just okay. be a folder. If there is an at sign, then you should have at least two folders followed by a file or um, the main entry is implied if there's no file. So would at Agoric slash swing set mm -hmm. correspond to a scope? It would you... correspond to a scope. Okay. Okay. Now, it could also be that we would say in our, in our scopes, there are two things. Um, base URL right and um, um, main entry point or yeah the main um, okay. this is called entry point and that gives it full parity um, to support node, to support anything at this point. Um, and the browser missing that because they didn't need it yet because there are not enough examples is not a good excuse why they should reinvent everything like everybody else is stupid. But they, they'll learn, you know. Um, so, so node needed those two pieces of information. 
I mean, Node has disk access and it knows it needs that ahead of time. But the browsers, you know, they don't have examples from the ecosystem. They have their own examples on their own ideas. So that's why everything stalls, really. Um, having those scopes being a locate thing is going to need just one detail um, that if it gets a specifier that is resolved with .index .j, uh, slash .js and one that is resolved without that part, then it should say to the resolver, those two are one thing. You just uh, can call them either way because the entry point um, and the index.js in here are both the same location. So that is the only distinction that is not necessarily going to need any disk access. Um, it's a manifest detail that resolve will need aside from this. Okay. This is like a virtual file system at this point. And this is a root, a root folder exists. And in it, there's always a scope. Uh, we can get fancy and we could say, you know, um, you know, and then this resolution here would have to do Yeah. Um, I'm sorry. I, did, I don't. I don't. I didn't understand what the significance of adding the slash one slash and the slash two slash was. So either scopes are are folders in a virtual root, or they are virtual paths hanging from the virtual root. Um, I don't. Can you, you know, can, can you give it? Can you give an example? I'm, I'm just. Yeah. So. Technically speaking, each one of those is a scope. And by writing them that way. Sorry, each one of what is a scope? What are, uh, yeah, in one second. So, so technically speaking, Atagoric slash scope dash B okay. reside, resides in the virtual root under a, a top level folder called Atagoric. Okay. And, then, and then you have those two uh, directories or two folders inside. So, so okay. the scoped paths here would look something like um, uh, whatever. Um, so this would look something like um, Atagoric scope dash A could, could theoretically mean scope You know, if, if we're, um, let's do file um, in, in the virtual system, right? Um, and then basically, um, if I do um, a dot dot slash here, I'm, I'm here. And if I do a dot dot slash, I'm all the way out here. At, the, at this, and then I can have other scopes than Agoric, you know, other pa um, um, other um, at uh, scopes, and in them I can have package scopes, which are which is what is defined in the scope map. So, uh, Um, you know, specifier location here, I've, it's just saying it's a module map. So let's, uh, let's do it this way. Right. So if I wanted to get Okay, is it just the, the at what wig fetch with dot slash being mapped to triple dot slash? Is that what I'm saying? Oh, the ellipses are, uh, I'm, I'm trying to say 
there be oh. a URL, right? So I just stuff. There okay. be stuff. Okay. Okay. Good. Right. Okay. okay. Um, hopefully, you know, um, um, I'll call it scheme because that annoys people in, uh, you know, they <laughs> ask. It's called a scheme if it's in the string. It's called a protocol if it's actually being implemented. But yeah. Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, so so you know it could be scheme one, two, three, but I'm not that anal, so <laughs> okay. right. So so the third example is to get to what wag. Okay. Mm, that will need to be. <laughs> for now at least, right? Um, and that will actually just result to this. But, you know, there are many, many ways that lead to Rome actually. So we can just say, this is one way. But my preferred way would be, uh, would be this. And because we are actually coercing this to be, um, you know, prefixed with file colon slash slash slash, and then we trim that in the end. Um, if it's a bare specifier, the resolve method will auto append a slash um, because it prefixes it with file to dots uh, triple slash. And then we actually trim everything up until here and then that what, will what, what is the url meaning of the triple slash um sorry the url oh me yeah. meaning of the triple slash oh yeah so it's double slash but then um that that's it's double slash followed ah. by device or followed by a host um okay. And so in Windows, it's um, C slash or you know X slash or whatever. Um, they have drive letters. They Got it. Yeah. Um, okay. Right. So um, so the triple slash obviously in in um, Unix and Linux and all of that is because your root is a slash and any protocol expects an entry into some domain and then that's. Okay. Um, yeah. So, uh, so if you couldn't tell by background noise, I joined again. Uh, I'm passengering on a trip north. So. <laughs> Hi, Michael. Hi. <laughs> yeah. So, so it sounds like you're getting down to the meat and potatoes of how scopes work. Yeah. Yes. So I'm, I'm going to put this in a. Gist. I just um, going to be a, re, um, a like a secret gist. I don't know what to call what. I'm going to confuse things more if I try. So um, I hope everybody has, you know, so, some of the, oh, it's being recorded, right? Yes. Okay, that's good. Because, um, and apparently I'm not even logged into Zoom. <laughs> what? All right. <laughs> How You're the host right now, Salah. This is like, this is Zoom, guys. They do magic, right? So. Um, no, I made you host. <laughs> yeah, but I'm not logged into Zoom, and somehow I'm using Zoom uh, as as me. Um, oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that is magic. Thanks for the story. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's okay. Authentication and authorization, all that stuff is like, you know, not it, it's not a big problem, obviously, because it's working. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I pasted the gist in the chat, and it looks something like this, and the video would probably be the best way to decipher what, what's over here. Yeah, so, so I guess that, did that clarify a bit, or did it leave more questions than answers, like usually? Uh, that's what I do, so. 
Uh, I, I feel like I, I do understand better. I can't say that I, you know, that, that I'm to the point where I feel like I'm overall oriented and understand. But this, the, this last thing we went through with the scopes is definitely helpful. Yeah, there, there's a typo. Obviously, there's a lot of those, but uh, we might as well just say, I didn't add this here. Uh, so it's more than a typo. It's, uh, Now, obviously, you don't want to get fetch after calling an HTTP request, right? Um, your fetch should actually be in your runtime, or else you couldn't do HTTP. Um, but yeah, so that's the wrong one. That's the right one. All right. Yeah, so, so I think there's uh, talk about the what lag loader. Um, can I hand it off and, you know, we can resume normal meeting stuff? I, I'm sorry, I didn't understand the question. Oh, like there's in the chat talk about the what lag loader and oh, oh, oh. stuff like that. Chat. Okay. Yeah, it, it, it's a it's really an outdated uh, attempt to you know make the loader and then followed by like three years of you know everybody fighting and. Well, I, in, in a similar neighborhood, I just looked at the import meta doodad thing and. Particular. And if I add this to what is available at runtime in, in uh, Monable XS, then I bet I could do reasonable. This is the missing information at runtime that would allow us to do reasonable module lookup. Import.meta.url. Um, Sorry? The import.meta.url, that's what you're talking about, right? Well, the example here is that, that uh, you, get a, you get basically the, the refer. Um, no, import.meta.url, you, you probably actually, in, in an, any normal module system like Node.js, you would get the absolute disk location. Yeah, that's, that's the refer. Um, that will become the referrer in the next, yes, yes. So, so yes, you're right. That will become the referrer of the import from in that module. Right. This is the, in any case, that absolute path is the information I need to actually do useful module lookups. Yes. Um, but in the case of scopes, um, we would uh, import the meta, the URL would be scope colon, um, you know, or some some kind of a of a prefix of a of a URL that scope says, doesn't occur in this document. Um, yeah, but 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 if you have your import .meta URL pointing to the full location on disk, then we violate we violate the whole um, separate where things are coming from and where things are actually resolvable without needing to hit the network or disk, resolvable against scopes. Um, the import.meta URL um, in current designs elsewhere always points to the actual location. Um, and in, in the compartment system, the actual location is considered privileged. Um, not, 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 you know, it's not considered something the code itself should know. Well, okay, so I don't need JavaScript to be able to to get to this. I actually don't need, the, I just need the full URL at runtime. 
I mean, in the in the runtime system, not in not available to you know code that's evaluating. Yeah. I'm so, just saying, if I could scribble that information away someplace and then look it up at runtime, if, while I'm doing the runtime part of the module lookup, that would help a lot. Yeah, and, and this I think comes in the gist. Um, you know, and, and the gist when we call locate, it gives you the absolute location. That would be the kind of import.meta URL that you want, not the result, but the absolute. Um, that is the one that you want to operate on at a run at, at a runtime um, implementation of the module system. But you know, so, so here we're separating what you do in Resolve. You don't need um, the full thing, but what you do in Locate, um, that that is what what um, that URL would would refer to. Okay, I'm not quite sure how Resolve and Locate are relevant to Modable, but okay. So modable, all the modules are basically fixed. Um, when you start your, your program, it's basically loading everything or at least, you know, having a map with every single path or is it going to actually look on disk um, lazily with every import? Uh, all I've seen is, is that it's all fixed. Yeah, I believe that's the case. So every file path maps to an, a module source text record. And then the well, I'm not aware of any such mapping. The source text is gone at runtime in excess. Okay, so it, it, it maps to a compiled instance of uh, module source text uh, according to the ECMAScript uh, spec. So let me show you this. Um, oh, yeah, here's an, an interesting question I hadn't thought to ask about the compiled form. The compiled form is called XSB? Yeah. Okay. Uh, is it separate compilation? Uh, in other words, yes. is the is is the contents of foo.xsb dependent only on the contents of foo.js? It does not look at any other file. Pretty sure that's the case. Okay. Okay. So, so um, yeah. So that that corresponds to the thing that. So let me let me, let me explain um, how I think I understand the XS behaviors in terms of Michael's import theory. And, oh good, Michael's still on. Uh, so Michael, please please catch me if this is um, wrong. That um, as we've seen with the um, manifest, uh, I understand the manifest in terms of Michael's import theory to be a mapping from absolute specifiers to module locations, did that, did that um, hypothesis hold up? Um, oh, sorry, are you talking to me now? Yes, yeah. I am, sorry. Did the, <laughs> sorry. Did, the, 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 the manifest that we were seeing, the excess manifest, did the hypothesis yeah. hold up that, that, that we can interpret that in terms of your import theory? as a mapping from absolute specifiers to module locations? Uh, yes, I believe so. Okay. Yeah, that's how, so that's that, how it works. Okay. Uh, that's so not that entirely did, reconciled with the, uh, with the other import systems, but yes, we could implement that. Okay, so, uh, so just in terms of trying to make a correspondence between what Access is doing and the concepts in Michael's import theory, so that, that, uh, that mapping is, uh, is for the initial state before any compartments have been created. 
And then there is a built-in resolver that does not consult the manifest, that is purely algorithmic uh, and is um, uh, 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 doesn't do the kind of general dot dot algebra that JavaScript code normally expects. But in any case, what it's giving us is it's turning all the relative specifiers uh, as they appear in import statements into absolute specifiers. And then the, um, the initial compartment uh, has a module map that goes from the, uh, the absolute specifier, the module maps that appear in the compartments uh, don't know anything about relative specifiers. They're, they're from absolute specifiers to these symbols. And JF and I had a long conversation in which uh, I think I, I ended up being confused about what the symbol designates. But um, uh, the, it goes from the absolute specifier to uh, a module ID, the symbol we were calling it a module ID. And the module ID in most ways seems to correspond to a, uh, a module, what the spec calls a module record. Um, uh, yeah, that's, which, that's the one I have right here. The source text module record is the one that uh, relates is specifically to modules that have imports and exports um, ESM modules, right? Okay, so the source text module record is, is that is a, uh, that is a module instance. That thing is, is, it has all of the context needed for execution. Ex um, exactly. Yeah. R whereas the XSB file corresponds to a module static record. Um, uh, what, my, what in Michael's import theory is called the module static record because it's just, it's separate compilation. It's, it's just the information that can be derived from the source text. Yes. And that's the thing that corresponds in the spec that you have up on the screen um, to the ECMAScript code field, which says parse node. And, you know, we can read into parse node is all of the information you can derive from the parse node. Oh, I, um, I, think, I think it also has the um, import entries those 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 are separate from the mapping for which the source text module record um right this the static the, the the module static record has the names of all the imports and, and the, the and names of words and indirect yeah um, so, right so they but this but this part here yes yes i'm sorry yes the import Yes, you're right. You're right. The import entries, local export entries, all of that is only derived from the parse node. So the content, so, so basically a, a module record is um, uh, that static information plus a context. Yeah, right. and, uh, and of course the uh, resolution of an import statically points to uh, an indicator of some other uh, module static record, but what those actual locations um, would, would translate to are, are, are dynamic, are considered dynamic information. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they come from the context itself, or, right. or you know something like the context, uh, like the base or you know origin or something. Right. Okay. So Mark, you were looking at the model thing through the, the import yeah. or theory. I don't know if you're done. Right. So, so the place where it's confusing is when you make a new compartment, you provide a absolute specifier as argument. The absolute specifier gets translated through the module map for that compartment into one of these module ID symbols. 
and then the 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 thing that is designated by that module ID now gets instantiated in that compartment. And that's where I'm confused, which is yeah. that, that would indicate that the module ID in that role is, is designating the module static record, i.e. Just, just the static information because it's getting a new context, whereas yeah. The module ID, otherwise in the the import map, is specifying, I believe, uh, module records, i.e., actual instances for which you 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 know you have, you know, where the the access to them is a um, is a capability and has to be handled by proper capability rules that you can only give access to things that you have access to. Which, so, so I, the I module could, um, ID having a dual role here is the thing that, that has me very confused. Okay, so I, I can say that module ID, I'm quite confident, is module location. And one of the things we use module location for is within the linkers to access the cache, to, uh, cache of already instantiated modules. Um, there, there's, a, there's a contrasted um, way to look at it with scopes. I'm sorry, Kasal, before, before you, I just want to understand what Michael just said. The module location yes. corresponds to a module static record, and there can be yes. multiple instances that correspond to that module location. So the but module only, location, one per each, only one for each linker. So it's the linker combination that gives the module location uh, the dynamic information. And what it, what corresponds to the linker in the is there a linker per compartment in this story? Yes, it's it's a linker per isolated evaluator essentially. Then uh, then I still don't. So then when one compartment creates another compartment, and yeah. it provides a module map for the other compartment, um, mm -hmm. uh, the does the linker for the new compartment get populated by a module location to module instance mapping from the old linker? Or is uh, that a... It depends. It depends. It's, you, you'd essentially be providing a new root linker to say that this is a, a new graph of modules, but that new root linker could delegate to the previous linker to say, for this module, I get this module location and I'd like to look it up in the previous linker. But we missed, so that's, we missed a step though that is confusing me, sorry. Um, I'm saying create compartment, here's your main entry point, it's a URL, and now there's a go going to be the first module map entry it's going to map from some uh, specifier that can be imported to the module source text record. Um, so, so my main entry point of that compartment, what does it map to in the module map? Does it have a mapping in the module map or is it considered module code that is not uh, importable? elsewhere in the in the compartment in the in the current access compartment api the first argument is a member of the domain of the second argument and these things are you could call them i think mark called them absolute specifiers yes yeah, so the the, the, yeah, the the mapping is from absolute specifier to module id uh, the absolute specifier i think is consistent with Michael's import theory as the thing that comes out of the resolve step. So dot slash um, index dot js would would that be like dot slash here implies um, scoped by the domain property or you know by 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 so uh, argument two uh, has a field called domain is that correct and that no it has a mapping and every mapping has a domain. All right, so I'm just trying to say if, if, my, if my new compartment 
um, uh, file uh, colon triple slash index.js. And then I specify whatever options in, in my code in that compartment. If I wanted to re-import from the um, 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 file colon triple slash index.js, if I wanted to import within the compartment exports from that file, uh, what would I call it? Like, what, what is the module specifier that goes after from? You see, so you it works a couple of different ways. Um, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry, you use the phrase module specifier. So I just want to, to disambiguate what, what that oh, term means before we answer. That comes from um, the module specifier. Um, it's a string literal. So, so, so you, you either import module specifier or you have a from clause that says from, and this is literally just a, a string. Um, so the, the import can happen a couple different ways. If you are evaluating module code, but it's an anonymous specifier, then you can't re-import yourself. Because so, basically if you give it, if you give it uh, the, the, the module transformer, uh, a block of code that's to be evaluated in a module context, it creates this uh, module static record for that code but the specifier is basically unforgeable. Like you can't, so you you can't can, name it with the string. You cannot point back to the module exports of the entry point that is passed to the first, as the first argument of new compartment. That, that, uh, that no, no, yeah. that, that's a different, that's a different case. In that case, the, the entry point passed to, make, to new compartment is a specifier. And what, right. what the specifier then it's the exact same absolute string that was passed in. So it, it's an absolute URL, it's an absolute location. I, like import.meta.url. If my if my entry point of compartment is doing a console log uh, import.meta.url, will it see the exact same string that the compartment was created with? That's plausible. I mean, Excess doesn't do import meta and uh, other things, but it's in the same part of my head, yeah. Yeah, and this is where I believe the idea of virtual scope um, being what the compartment map defines so that um, scoped resolutions would not, would, would be deterministic. And you could actually create a subcompartment that shares the um, the scope map, but it has its separate module map, which we know will always um, end up hitting the same prefetched resource if it was imported in the parent compartment. Um, so, so there's only one importer in any compartment chain. Um, and that's the top level compartment. Um, and, you know, compartments do not share uh, more information that is needed, which is really scopes. Um, because other than that, you'll be passing a lot of duplicate records for every single mo uh, module entry. And not every compartment needs all that information in its module map. I guess we're over time. I talk a lot, so you know we're actually not over time. So, <laughs> I think I think this is a good note to adjourn on. I did I did learn a lot, uh, but I, one of the things I learned is um, uh, just how far I actually am from understanding um, modules in JavaScript. I really had no idea that I was this far from understanding it. I think there are many uh, competing 
perspectives on what modules should be in JavaScript. And that's why we're here in 2020, five years later, right? Uh, and, and, you know, we still cannot do anything other than make sure you put the extension. And if it's a relative thing, it has to be a real thing. So, okay. so one, of, one of the things that I was hoping to do uh, uh, that JF uh, and I, JF and I will be attending the February TC39 meeting. I was hoping to have a spec for a compartment API that met the goals previously enumerated uh, uh, that we could uh, use to, to, to ask for advancement of SES uh, to stage two. Uh, and I think that um, my understanding is certainly um, too shaky to feel like we can get there by February. Yeah, it's a uh, part of this is if we're the ones defining the compartment API, then it should be a simpler task, hopefully. <laughs> so um, let's 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 assume that we are where you know, we're defining yeah. it, but we're defining one that has to be acceptable to access and and has to serve all you know the various sets of goals that we that we talked about earlier. But yes, let's say we're defining it. Did just goals getting written down? Because I can't refer to it earlier. <laughs> Sorry. Um, it's, it didn't, that's life. I guess they got recorded. Yeah. It, it, yeah. Um, yeah, they did get recorded. Um, so in any case, so Michael, the, so let's assume that we are defining it. Um, uh, do you feel like we're, you know, within, um, you know, within shooting distance of actually writing something down that you're happy to, pro to propose for advancement to stage two? Um, I think, <clears throat> I think the fundamental thing that we come to in this meeting is that, uh, we essentially need two maps at least. One of them being, how do we get, how do we map from specifiers to locations uh, on disk or on the network or wherever? And that's what corresponds to the import maps or export maps of, of uh, the browser and node. Um, okay. And then the second thing is, what are we doing exactly for least authority linkage? And that's a different problem, I think. And as okay. long as we keep those two maps separate, uh, I think it's a little bit easier to understand rather than trying to think okay. of how do we how do we map all the things at one level. Okay, good. I'm I'm concerned right now only with the second part, and I think that yes. what I would like to take to the February meeting is only the second part. So for the yes. second part, the mapping is, would be from what to what. Um, for a given entry point from absolute specifier to parent absolute specifier. Um, could we add the term scope specifier to, dis to distinguish it? Um, I, I believe the missing piece, if, if you know, import map and export map are not interchangeable because the missing piece is export map is defined in a scope import map is defined in abstraction, like anything can overwrite anything under any path. And that is where this is the foot gun that will basically lead to leakage between uh, authorities, between packages. Yeah, um, but as Mark said, we're, we're not looking at that level of the mapping. Um, what I've called absolute specifier, you would call scope specifier, to my knowledge. Okay, so so a mapping from absolute specifier to, and then you said parent absolute specifier, didn't understand that. Yeah, so if the code that my importer is evaluating says import 
star from foo or whatever it says import something from foo then foo foo is going to be the key of this map but it's it's not really foo that's the key it's the absolute specifier corresponding to foo right since that's the we don't want to map the source text directly we want to map it to this virtual file system and then what that results to is something that we create, that the importer creates from evaluating other sources. And that's the whole linkage step in there. For this map that so, we want to say, go ahead. So what does parent, I still don't understand even what a parent absolute specifier means. <laughs> I, I guess what I'm trying to say is that it's it's the thing it's the module location essentially. It's how do we get the source code corresponding, or how do we how do we look up this module, whether it's a source code or whether it's a, a built-in module or whatever else. We need some kind of key so that we can find it, uh, and in XS our only option is to map that to the like the XSB basically the something to, in the to that, that means to, oh, to mean XSB, something to the platform right. that yeah. means something to the parent platform that's what I'm trying to say parent in what sense uh, in the sense that the module location is kept abstract when you're you, you can't directly access the module location from a, from a child module but in the importer or in the parent platform it's something that you can use to download source code or to refer to a built-in model. To use the definition of the word that I'm asking you to define. <laughs> Is this, sorry, <laughs> what was the what was the word? What was okay. that word? I asked the parent in what sense? Do you mean in the sense of one compartment contains another? Or is, is I mean in the sense of I, I mean in the sense of there is an importer or something that is evaluating all this code linking it together. So that, that's the host platform, essentially. I see. And that can be virtualized to whatever layers you want. Like, we could have the, the link together platform become another host platform for something else. And, and the topmost um, uh, parent um, um, specifier, sorry, parent um, uh, mapping will be the uh, literal one. It's, you know, if, if mm -hmm. It says map HTTPS colon slash slash whatever, and it gives that to the parent. The parent will be, well, I have no map, you know, I'm on the internet here, so I'll just go get that. Um, so, so are we talking about this kind of um, distorting URLs as they go up the chain? You know, one URL asked to a parent will will be converted by a map to another URL until it gets all the way to well, the top where that's pet. The, the, the thing is that that's not quite the same chain that I was talking about. Like you're not talking about instantiating multiple importers. You want to do multiple compartments with different mappings. That kind of thing is is flat in the sense that we're only mapping to module locations in the importer. But the children have to be able to say, I want to map to the same module location as this other module that I could have imported. Uh, so if we're evaluating code that says imports bar from foo, then in our, in, our, um, in our top level map, like the one that we're not specifying, the import map or the export map or whatever that is local to the platform, we're saying, we're given absolute specifier. This is the location that it corresponds to. And that's what the manifests are, right? So the maps are right. not nested. The map, the mapping is not a nested map, but the compartment is not a nest map. nested execution contexts or, you know, some, yes. some form of nesting happens for compartments that has nothing yeah, to per, do with mapping. And, and per compartment, we're dealing with the second kind of map, which is saying, I want to rewrite this particular module to go to a different place. And what if it overlaps? That's the least authority linked. 
what if it overlaps a mapping in the parent compartment? It maps to something that the parent compartment maps to something else. Would you ignore that uh, second um, mapping? Yeah. We, so the, the, parent, the parent mapping is just how do we get uh, to, uh, we're either dealing where we have to download source code or we have some kind of built-in mechanism. And that parent mapping that I'm talking about, that's just whatever the host provides. So we don't really even have to, uh, we don't necessarily have to refer to it in the sense that it depends on the importer that we build, whether we're using that host mapping or we're using some other kind of map. So I, I think but, what we need to write up here is the motivating, motivating examples. Start from there and if the example, yay. yeah, I mean, we're, we're all trying to imagine very complicated details of the system, but I think we have to start by the examples. And you know, if they motivate us, we write, uh, we argue about what we're going to write. Is that? <laughs> so uh, I found Kate's um, to-do list example that involves like only three modules or something uh, to be a very very nice first example. It only exercises a fraction of the expressivity that we need here, but mm -hmm. um, uh, it, it touches a bunch of things and uh, it's very understandable. Um, I'm also thinking that, you know, some of the um, uh, simple modelable examples, like the, the light bulb example that they showed off in their talk, <clears throat> uh, it, but, but uh, that one's not, um, I know the, the, the thing about Kate's example is we were able to describe the least authority linkage uh, in yeah. an imagined manifest. Yeah. Um, where so, then, yeah. Yeah, so all I'm trying to say is that the manifests that Kate is talking about are necessarily different from these modable manifests that we're dealing with. Yes. And, yes. and different yeah. than the import maps and different than export maps. Right. Where does one find Kate's example? Uh, hold on. Was it in the safe modules repository or it was somewhere else? Uh, might be in safe modules repository. I'll take a look right there. That would be a good place for it. And I think we should make a repo for these meetings where we can have um, Everybody who's having an example or something, you know, they, they, they would contribute to the, you know, this repo. The examples would, you know, I don't know if that makes sense or not, but um, just a, a place where we keep all our, um, um, you know, this, the code that is on the screen or in the stream uh, for other people to refer to when they look at the video. Mark, have I got it here? Uh, so you've got the right repository. Now look under the examples directory. Okay. To do is ambiguous. You got to see preference. Uh, so, um, so legacy to do is the most informative one. Okay. And the manifest dot JSON uh, in there. Yes, yes, you got it. So that's that's the I think the the best first example for a lot of this stuff. Uh, and I want to, you know, Michael was exactly right that we're not trying to turn the excess manifest into something that can express this. Uh, the in the all of this kind kind of least authority linkage, uh, that's what their compartment API is for. Um, uh, and that's consistent with, with uh, so the idea would be that the compartment API should be adequate to write an interpreter for, like, I'll just call it the Kate manifest, um, mm -hmm. uh, to write an interpreter for the Kate manifest that as driven by the Kate manifest creates a set of compartments and module maps and instantiated modules that are linked together as described by the Kate manifest. 
Uh, and that's a good first test for any compartment API is whether you can write the tape manifest interpreter for setting up a system of linked modules. And, okay. and the tape manifest seems to depend a lot more on the total boot tools as far as what we're aiming Sorry. for. Okay. De depend a lot more on uh, like the the tofu tools uh, oh yeah would be would be the mechanism by which we'd write a lot of that that's right so the so the idea with the tofu tools is the tofu tools would generate an initial um, an, an initial manifest that's of the form of the cape manifest uh, but then um, uh, because it's automatically generated from sources, it doesn't yet express uh, 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 policy decisions, you know, manual policy decisions. Uh, and then, um, uh, so, um, uh, so the idea would then be that uh, you can use the same manifest format uh, to express uh, policy decisions like uh, you don't get the real one, you get the following attenuation of the thing. So, uh, so for example, if you only need read access to a file, not read write access, and therefore we're going to impose a attenuating module between you and the file system that only gives you read access to a file, that would not be something that a tofu tool could, do, you know, could decide to do. It would be something that a programmer would have to manually go in and express. Um, and uh, and the Cape manifest you know has has an example of that kind of attenuation. Is there time um, to explain this example to me? Yeah, yeah, we're going way over time, but um, except for us so, all, we're all in we're all in work. <laughs> um, So the definition of over time, it's when you go over time. No, it was, it was, it ended 33 minutes ago, the scheduled duration. <laughs> yeah, I'm just doing the definition by definition thing. I, I just thought no. that was annoying, so did it. Okay, so <laughs> at, the, at, the outer, at the outer part, you've got resources. Um, uh, within, re, within the resources section, um, you should be looking oh. at the manifest.json. Okay, so this is the important thing to look at is the manifest.json. And then we can, we can take a look at the source files as well, but this will tell you, I think, most of what you need to know. Um, so uh, the, uh, so uh, within resources, the names of each section is the name of the, the name of the resource. And we're not at this point trying to deeply think through is this an absolute specifier or anything? This predates actually are trying to be precise about that. Um, uh, but then within each described resource, there's a, there's a subsection called modules, and then there's a subsection called globals. So within the resource named index, we see a subsection named modules and this is giving us our uh, import mapping, which is when the module index says it imports FS, uh, where in our modern terminology, I would say that that's the FS there is the relative specifier. But when it says import FS, then what we should give it is the, re the resource that this manifest calls altfs, which actually corresponds to an altfs.js file in this repository. And when altfs imports fs, give it the normal fs. So the, the true there just means give it the normal one, give it a, give it a you know, don't, don't remap it to something else. Roger. Uh, okay, now the uh, supports color is the interesting one because it has uh, two, both a module section and a globals section. So the module section maps OS to all to OS in exactly the same way we just mapped all to FS, uh, where the alt is 
a, a uh, you know, is written as an attenuator. So AltFS imports the real one, but AltFS exports an attenuated form. So support color only gets the attenuation exported by AltFS. Uh, but then also supports color uh, is in a compartment where there is a global named process. And the global named process actually comes from the export named process from the module alt process. Right, okay. And the alt process uh, is executed in the scope where um, uh, it has a global variable named process whose value is the normal process, the normal value of the, of the, of the process. So it attenuates by it, the thing that it has as a global, it attenuates it by exporting it. And then on line 43, uh, the thing that's exported by the module alt process becomes the global variable process as seen by the module supports color. Okay, it's pretty clear to me that your goal is met by the current API. Did, does, does anything interpret this manifest or is it just for discussion? Is there code that- uh, this would, Well, the, 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 um, not, there is no interpreter for this. We never, okay, wrote, right. we never got as far as writing an interpreter. Okay. But this is, this is you know- Oh, here's the we, stuff. Yeah. Um, so the idea was that, you know, to move forward and turn this into an actual uh, working example. And we, we never got that far with this, but, you know, Bradley and Kumavis moved ahead with their respective tofu systems, which are, you know, um, which are real in which they're actually doing things with uh, and which are, I believe, at least as expressive as this. And I'm, I'm sure considerably more expressive, but. This kind of gets at the, the essential thing that we need here. And the key thing here is that by imposing the attenuators, it's expressing more than more policy than you can gather simply by examining sources. Okay, so I, it does say where to start. It says index. Well, it says index.js. Um, so I, I was going to suggest that I think we're we're very close to uh, what would be needed for a proposal to advance SES, and the the only thing that we really need to add to this picture is the idea of of packages and scopes, and um, <clears throat> and, and basically the all, all the rest of the stuff like the discussion of import maps and all that other stuff can be swept under the rug or this is the implementation of make importer on a given platform. Uh, yeah. yeah, Scopes does that. Scopes gives you this ability to, to entertain all these details. Uh, it also prevents the problem of saying a module map can have a module at the root level for which there are multiple competing authorities of scopes if they come from different URLs. Is there time for me to run with this and talk to you about how it works with the current compartment API for access? Or is that kind of obvious to you already? Uh, it's, um, it's not obvious to me because of my confusion of what a module ID designates. However, uh, one critical thing that we need to um, figure out that this example does not exercise is this example does not have two different instantiations of the same module source text with different authority. And uh, that's, and, and that's really where the, you know, this issue of what does a module ID designate becomes crucial because um, you know, a, a module record is a given instantiation. A module location corresponds to just the static information. And the, the, um, there's no explicit notion of a linker 
as opposed to a compartment. So I don't understand yet how multiple different instantiations are represented in the current XS compartment API. Nevertheless, it should be adequate for this example. Um, so is it useful for me to try to write some stuff down about the current compartment API? Yes. Okay. So um, you, you build the thing and it comes up with the sort of initial compartment map one. And this has uh, at least process <laughs> and FS in it. Um, and then what it has over here is uh, some symbol, okay? I'm sorry, are you writing down the argument to the compartment, to the, to the compartment constructor? The, the, no, I'm the saying this the initial conditions. The initial conditions, okay, okay. Good. Right, good. so it, the, you know, this is the compartment map zero, whatever. Um, okay. So it has in its domain process and FS and, the, th the, you know, if you dereference FS, you get some symbol. Actually, there, there is no module name process. There's a global variable. There's an initial global variable name process. Okay, there's a, there's a module there's, named alt process. Okay. Okay. Um, maybe I'll just focus on the supports color. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good one. Uh, so, all right, so there has to be a supports color thing here, I suppose, here. Mm -hmm. Right, the initial conditions have to have an entry for each of the resources in the uh, Kate manifest. Okay. Um, and then to arrange for the alt OS. Um, what is the order of arguments to the compartment constructor? This is the um, uh, sort of uh, main module. Is that fair? Yeah, specify for the main module. Yeah. Right. And then the, okay. uh, oh, I think the globals go next. And then, that's what I was wondering. Okay. Okay. Um, and, 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 and that's why the uh, supports color is interesting is because uh, there are such globals. I think that's right. And good, good. That makes sense to me. Globals. Okay, so this would be. So this, so yeah, there would have to be, right, exactly. Yes. Right. And I might do just to avoid confusing ourselves, sure. Okay. Uh, and then if you do C one dot global dot process, you're gonna get Right. So it's reasonably clear, clear to me that the XS compartment API currently can do this. Good, good. Um, interestingly, it can do that. I mean, this is kind of obvious now that I'm looking at it, but it never occurred to me before. 
Uh, it can do that by generating code from the manifest, but it can't do it by simply running a fixed interpreter that takes the manifest as input. And the reason is because of the import. Uh, let's see. I guess so. Yeah. I mean, you know, we could use a dynamic import expression at the cost of making everything uh, micro asynchronous, but, but that, I think that's, that introduces um, distraction. I think thinking of us as pre-processing pre the manifest into a source like this um, that differs from what we could do with an interpreter only because of the imports makes perfect sense. Yeah, so I guess you can't really write, well, I don't know how you would write an actual interpreter for the, <laughs> that, that just interprets it and runs. Right, so you'd write a translator into, okay. uh, basically this, the source code that we're looking at here, starting with import, this is kind of the generated start module for the system as a whole. And uh, that actually makes perfect sense because in a procedurally specified uh, least authority setup, there's an initial module for the system as a whole that has all of the authority and has to, um, uh, you know, in um, uh, uh, Dan, since you're have an E background, the difference between E and E maker, uh, the, the uh, Kate manifest would basically be compiled into the equivalent of a dot E file. Right. Whose purpose yeah. is only to load other modules, take initial authority, um, wire things together and hand out attenuations of initial authority to other modules as well as wiring them to each other. And that seems and then that, that um, initial module is just the thing that gets executed that does that. And Kate's manifest is just the data language for saying the same thing. Right. Yeah. And, and this is where I see the role of make, make importer is basically just to provide enough of a, of a runtime so that that initial module can be evaluated. Right. Yeah, when you said that that this has to be, you know, I have to have the import here. It it reminded me when you guys said, "Oh, when you translate individual modules into these evaluable strings, that's not the end of the story. You have they become these like functions and or functors, I guess you said, and then there's one more step." Yeah. Right. The, the, the evaluable string still corresponds to just a module static record that's not linked up and hasn't been given a scope or anything yet. Right. Okay. Um, Michael, would you like to try to sketch a proposable compartment API? Uh, okay. Um, would... So we're looking at how do we do the least authority linkage? That's the main thing we're focusing on? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And, and um, also, if you could coordinate with uh, JF on that? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, as far as we know, the spec could describe the excess thing as is, true? It could. It would have to uh, be a bit more, like, like uh, even just a, another function that um, uses the access compartment API underlying, but that would also provide that initial startup module kind of thing. Oh, okay. 
I would argue scopes again. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the the yeah the main thing about the existing compartment API is that I just don't understand what a module ID means from a capability perspective. Mm, yeah. But it, it, you know, it might be that if that's, you know, that, that it might be that they simply got it right and all I need is to understand it. It, it seems to me like it's used as a key to an internal map. And the reason it's a symbol is just so you can't forge them. Is it a global internal map? Yeah. And well, I, I mean, global. Th they actually global? they actually let you replace the function that looks them up, but the default is that it's a global. Yeah, you have to write C code to change that. Yeah. Right. So so if you have to write C code, then 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 it's a, then as far as I'm concerned, it's a global internal map. Right. And it's a global internal map that if it's, if the key, if it's a global internal map where the keys are these symbols and the values are either something that is per module static record or you know, per module source, like a module location, or it's per module instance, or it's something else. And that's the thing that I really don't understand. Well, um, one thing you said, you're not sure what it is with respect to capabilities. At first I was thinking, well, you just look up data, but no. Um, so for example, they have their file module that gives you file system access. Um, so I don't know if, I mean, when you look up, in the compartment map, you just get a symbol. But if you use the compartment API, you can get the file system API and get out the files. You know, right, right. So the these symbols are capabilities. I mean, th there's capabilities to something. Yeah. Um, and they're clearly power because the 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 logic of how they're trying to obey capability uh -huh. principles here uh -huh. is that I can only give you a module map that's that's populated with uh, things that I have access to. Yeah, now strictly speaking, the symbols are just data, but it's the compartment constructor that where all the power is. Right, they, they can, yes, the, the compartment. And each, the, the, the Compartment constructor in the new compartment is limited to the to the authority of the, of the right. So the compartment. So the, there's a there's there's a rights amplification of the compartment plus a symbol, is the power. But since the but but if the table is global, and then all the compartment constructors are referring to the same table, and therefore. Uh, sorry, I was just done. Okay, if the table. So the, the symbols themselves are not capabilities at the JavaScript level because they're just symbols. Um, uh, I mean, they have, I'm sorry, they're, 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 they're capabilities in the sense of uh, capabilities as keys, not in the sense of object capabilities. Um, by themselves, they don't grant authority, but there's a right simplification that that plus a compartment constructor grants authority. But, sure. but if we assume everybody has some compartment constructor and if we assume that the table from symbols to, to something powerful is global, then mm. any compartment structure takes you to the same table. And therefore, the symbol itself is effectively the capability. Yes. I wonder about so that. I wonder what happens so then if the question. Yeah, I wonder, because they say that the, the you know, the compartments, the, the, don't have more authority than the one they came from. I wonder what would happen if you somehow got the symbol to it. So I think what they mean is that you have to have the symbol in order to populate a map with the symbol. 
and symbols are unforgeable. So they're, so I think what they mean is with regard to a capabilities as keys model. But here's an interesting test, which is communicate, you know, grab one of these symbols, communicate right. it through a share, shared variable, communicate it through some other means. And now can compartment A create compartment B where the compartment map of compartment B uses a symbol that's not in the compartment map of compartment A, but is still a symbol mm -hmm. that has been communicated to compartment A. Right, yeah. That was, I was going to try to test to see if there really is right amplification or if they really do neuter each compartment constructor. Yeah, yeah, it would be interesting because uh, uh, certainly my previous understanding never made that distinction. It was treating the, the maps as being sort of a mapping to the previous map, but it's really not. It's a mapping to these symbols. Yes, yeah, and this is where the model that um, we have these host level mappings, like the, the manifest or whatever it is, and then we have our least authority linker that runs. Least authority linker has all the authority, so it can link up the modules however it wants. Now, the question is what happens in those modules? And I've just been deferring it to saying they can, they can virtualize the importer and, and make their own importer, but it will be confined the same way that the, the least authority linkage can find it. So, so that's not adequate for the, the, the goal that we stated, which is assume some kind of initial importing magic that we're not mm -hmm. trying to specify. And we are trying to specify a compartment API that given that all the modules have already been loaded, basically given that, that all of the um, you know, that I, th I think it's equivalent in the import theory to say, given that we already have all of the module static records that we will mm -hmm. ever refer to, and we have yeah. some initial namespace for naming all the module static records. Uh, and also given that we have module instances for all of the built-in special uh, powers, all, all of the uh, initial okay. special powers, those have to be module instances. Given that we have both of those, can we design a compartment API that enables us to do all of our least authority linkage of those module static records to each other and to attenuations of those initial powers? Yes. That's exactly what you need there. So, so the static records um, and the attenuations of, are we talking about internal? Like module instances here are built-ins, like, like um, import FS or? Yes, yes. The thing, yep. the thing is we can, we, um, the, this, the initial state Yes. Um, only needs module static records for modules that are written by the user, but a given execution environment has initial powers, and those powers can only be represented by module instances. Yes. So, so I, I guess what I was getting to is that uh, that that startup that linker would have a different compartment API than the things it links together. And this is where the nesting of power would make sense in that that, that startup that does the, the least authority linking does have direct access to the, the host's modules. But, but here we're, we're, we're talking exactly about the V8 snapshots that they create um, you can create a V8 snapshot of all the modules, and basically you can rerun 
your uh, V8 environment using the static records along with what maps them to the specifiers that import those static records. And now you don't need any modules um, on disk, but, but what, what is saved is the static record uh, along with what it maps to in that snapshot. Yeah, I have not yet studied the V8 snapshot and clearly it's relevant. Um, I mean, they're all implementing similar ideas now and all, all browsers have module caching that follows, you know, what was learned of the V8 uh, snapshots. And, and V8 snapshots were for scripts initially, right? Uh, it's, it's um, um, it doesn't eval source text uh, it actually takes the um, um, the bytecode, I think, that comes from it, um, and then it keeps that bytecode as 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 the um, mm -hmm. yeah, as the linkable uh, thing, and then all it has to do is wire the links across those uh, evaluations, so that um, you know each specifier points to, um, yeah, so, so I think, yeah, we're definitely over time in my brain, <laughs> my brain is okay. completely, yeah. Yeah, yeah. This, was, this was very valuable, but yeah, the, um, uh, okay, um, so uh, Michael, you will coordinate with JF and try to sketch something. Sure, yeah. Great. All right. Um, okay. Thank you, everybody. Okay. No. Thanks, Dan. Bye, Todd. Yeah. All right. Take care. See you, Mark. See you, Richard. Thanks, <laughs> 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 Bye. All right. You know, I was just testing. You know? <laughs> <laughs> All right. See ya. Bye bye. Uh, um, um, Michael, um, uh, count me in. Like I, I assumed, you know, I'm, I'm hopefully going to be. Oh, you hung up already. Oh crap. Anyways, all right. See you guys later.